that pain. We all face it at some point. It seems to strike without warning and it can develop into something much worse if it's left untreated. It doesn't matter what age you are, and it can be anywhere from your neck down to your pelvis. But have you ever asked yourself, what caused that? Your back pain causes can come from the way you walk, the way you stand, how much you sit during the day, what kind of jobs you do. But most importantly, your back pain comes from other parts of your body rather than your back. Now, for some, you'll do strength training to get your back stronger, thinking that that will stop it. And the sad part is it may actually make it worse. What we will teach you today is how did that start? What could be causing your pain to happen? And the real importance behind stretching your muscles to be able to get them to work properly with your bones. Most people, when they stretch, stretch incorrectly. They hold it way too long, they put way too much pressure on it, and they're not releasing from their brain. Before you can release physically with your muscles, you have to release emotionally with your muscles. And we're gonna teach you that today. And when we're done today, you will understand why your back hurts, and you'll get a clearer picture of what to do to stop that pain. Doesn't matter if you're a teenager, if you're an adult, or you're an older adult, it's never too late to change it. So, let's get ready, let's dive right in. You ever had a stiff neck, stiff upper back? Many times that'll come from the way when you walk with the cell phone in your hand. You're looking down at that cell phone, puts a lot of pressure on the back of your neck and into the mid back. Working on a computer will do the same thing. And as you're sitting there, the muscles on the front of your thighs will tighten, which will cause a stiff low back at some point. And these things will build over your lifetime. What, what most people do when they're trying to stretch out their bodies is they'll think if they're going to stretch the front of their, their quads out, that they'll actually grab their leg and they'll hold here in the gym. Well, that's not really a great quad stretch. We're going to teach you later how to do it the right way. The second part in the low body that affects your neck and your upper back is the calf muscles in your, in your low body. Many times in the gym, you'll stretch those calf muscles on a slant board or you'll do it on a step or they even may have you to lean against a wall. And they treat it as if it's one muscle, but in reality, there's four muscles in your calf that has to be stretched out. And the way they teach in a gym is just not going to do that. We'll teach you properly how to do that later so that you can take the proper stride and push off with your toes and allow your body to stand up straight to take those stiff necks and stiff mid back out. So as we move into the adults, they do similar things that will cause a lifetime of back pain for them. Many of them started early when they were in their teens and 20s, and now as an adult, they tend to continue that process. For men, you'll see a lot of men wear back braces or the little Velcro strap that runs around their waist trying to protect their back. And even if they're lifting something like this properly with their legs and coming back up, they can still experience low back pain. And the reason for that is that they're tightening the muscles on the front of their quadriceps or the front of their thighs here, and that causes the body to literally start to lean forward. For many women, they'll wear high heel shoes, and those high heel shoes will cause them to take shorter strides, and that shorter stride then will force them to lead with their nose because the heels shift them forward, lead with their nose, and that will lead to mid back, upper back, and low back pain as well. Again, just like with the teenagers in the 20-somethings, they'll go to the gym, and the idea is that if I lift a lot of weights and I can strengthen my body, I can stabilize those parts of my back, and that will cause the pain to go away. In reality, what happens is by strengthening the muscles and making them tighter, you're actually causing more compression on the spine itself, which can lead to things like bulging disc and herniated disc and pinched nerves, and more importantly, it can lead you into an older part of your life where you're bent over like your grandmothers or your moms and your dads. And what we want to do later is show you how to do exercises or stretching to come back up into the straight position. And stretching is just as important for you as strength training because what the stretching does is it stops you from having injuries, it stops you from dealing with the pain, and it allows your body to age well. So let's move on to the older adult. 
Now for many people in the older adult stage, they've been dealing with back pain for a long time. And they've been taking pills, two, three a day. They may be getting injections. They may be wearing braces. And for some, they may actually wind up with surgery trying to stop this pain. The downside is, is for many older adults, is they will stop doing the things they did when they were younger, thinking that it's just their age is causing that to be a problem, and they will sit a lot. And unfortunately, the more they sit, the more pressure it puts on their back because again, it shortens the muscles on the front of their thighs, it shortens the muscles on their inner thighs, it shortens the muscles in their abdominal muscle, in their abdominal area, and also shortens the chest muscles. Well, with all of those muscles on the front side shortening, there's no doubt that their body is just going to rotate forward like this. So the key here is that you cannot take a pill, you cannot wear a brace, you cannot have surgery to think you're going to stop that without doing the stretching that we will teach you how to do. And yes, even as an older adult, it's not too late. You can change that, but it's going to take you a little bit of time because you've had a whole lifetime of walking in this crooked state. If you take a little bit of time each day and follow what we tell you to do, what you'll find is that your body will start to straighten up and you will feel better than you felt in many, many years. And the best part is, is you'll stop damaging your body, but you have to put in the work. As we saw with the teenagers, as well as in the adult, as they're walking, their bodies will tend to lean slightly forward. Now that'll show up as back pain in the back, but many times it's coming from the quadriceps on the front. Now I'm going to use my client today, Susan, who's going to help me in stretching the front of this out. Now what I'm going to do first is show you how to stretch the front of the quadriceps out with someone's help, and then I'm going to have Susan to do it on her own so that you can see that you can do the same thing at home. So when you've got someone laying on their side in this manner, if you're helping them out, what you want is to have them to hold this leg with their left hand and you can step behind them and so you can put the, their ankle right on your hip. Now I'm not pulling this hard because what I, I don't want her to fight with me, but what I want is I want her to breathe out as the leg comes back and extend out. Now for most people, they will stop where they're level with their torso. The knee really should come back about three or four inches like this to extend that back out. And as you do that, when the person stands back up, now they stand up straighter, which will I'll show you how it will help you later in the video to keep your body nice and straight. Now, if you don't have someone to help you and you need some, you need to be able to do it yourself, then Susan can grab her ankle here. As you can see, she's holding on here. And what I would suggest is, Look down your body so you can see the leg, and as you pull that hand back, breathe out, and don't force it, but allow the muscles to let go. And so you can see she can duplicate the same thing that I'm doing with her as an assistant. When we were talking earlier about teenagers walking, especially looking at their phone as they're walking down the sidewalk, many times what will happen, the calf muscles themselves will shorten, which will cause the ankle not to have as much flexibility as it's supposed to. Believe it or not, that lack of flexibility will cause you to lead with your nose and not your belly button. I want to show you how to stretch out the calf. There's four muscles in the calf itself, and you have one on the inside and the outside that controls your foot laterally for balance, but then you have two in the middle that controls the ankle to determine how well you step as far as how long your stride is and you being able to walk leading with your belly button and not your nose. When you're stretching your calf with someone who's assisting you, what you want is to have them to lay your foot up on the shoulder like that with the leg at 90 degrees to the body. It can lay on my shoulder in an assisted position and I'm using my hands not to pull hard but to gently pull the toes down towards her to stretch out the middle calves, which will extend the range of motion of the ankle. If I take this foot and turn it to the inside, now I'm going to stretch more to the outside, bring it back down, and in each of these directions you want to hold this for three to five seconds and repeat eight to ten times as you're doing that. 
After you do this side, rotate to the opposite side. Now we're going to get more to this side of the calf and you do the same stretch again, three to five second hold, eight to ten times. Now you can do this on your own. So Susan set up for me. When I do these, I typically will do these with my back against the wall. But if you can't get on the floor, you can sit in a hard back chair with an ottoman. You're going to have the strap around the ball of the foot. You're going to hold the two straps together. You're going to stay nice and straight here. And then for three to five second hold, pull the toes back towards you. Repeat it eight to ten times. Now, once you've done the eight to ten times, getting the two middle calf muscles, you can turn the foot inward, repeat it again, and you'll get the outside calf muscle by turning that foot inward just like that. Then you can turn, slide the foot out the other way, and you'll get the inside over here as you're stretching that back out. And in each of those directions, you want to do eight to 10 repetitions and hold it three to five seconds. So the whole goal of these stretches is really to stretch the front side of the body so it makes it easier for the back side of the body to hold you up. This can be done on the floor and it can be done on the bed. If you have a really soft bed, it's a little more difficult, but for some people you may not be able to get on the floor. Start out laying flat like Susan's laying here. Now Susan, come up on your elbows. And as you come up on your elbows, look up towards the ceiling. Now the goal is not to hold tight here. But the goal is to release on the abdominal muscles on the front side. And this is going to allow the body to release. Stay in this position about seven to eight seconds. Go back down, catch your breath for about two or three seconds and come right back up again and stretch. And again, you're releasing from the front side. As you get where you don't have to use as much here and, and pressure to pull your body up, you can work your way up to your hands like in a push-up position. And what we're doing is releasing the abdominal muscles so that she can stand up straighter. Hold that for seven to eight seconds, release, and come right back down into a resting position. We're gonna look at now the whole back. We've always talked about the low back, but we're also gonna include the mid back and the upper back. And here's an important thing. From a teenager to a older person, the placement of the head will determine how much pain you have in these three parts of the back. And the reason for that is that there's two muscles that attach at the base of the skull, and those two muscles run down the length of the spine to the pelvis. The head itself weighs about 10 to 12 pounds. Every inch the head leans forward, that weight doubles. So in this particular case, you see Guy's head is slightly forward. That's going to put about 30 pounds of pressure back here and into this part of his back. Part of what's causing that is not just leaning his head forward, but you notice the shoulders are rounding in as well. That is the result of the two chest muscles on each side shortening, causing his shoulders to round in. And again, it puts a tremendous amount of pressure here. For teenagers, you get in this position a lot, walking as you're looking at your cell phones. As people age, they tend to do that as they're walking, looking down at the sidewalk, trying not to make eye contact. And for people who are even older, they may be doing it trying to avoid a fall. The key to it is to be able to look up with your eyes and look down. So you can see here, if I have Guy to bring his shoulders back, watch his head come up. Then as he releases and shortens his chest muscles, see how the head goes back down. Here's something that a lot of people will try in this position is that they think that if they strengthen in here, that they can actually cause themselves to stand up straighter all the time. And the truth is, is that unless you open these muscles up on the front side, no matter how much strength you put into here, these muscles will fatigue and go into a spasm. And then this will become worse. So we're gonna show you how to, to lengthen the muscles on the front side of the chest and also on the front side in, in the neck area to get you back up straight. So guys, stand back up straight for me. And that's where we want you to be. As you can see, a guy walking, he's walking in a heel toe fashion, which will cause him to lead with his nose and not his belly button. And from the side angle, notice how his ankles are not bending and he's not using his toes. And then as you're walking back, it's still heel toe. 
And that's going to lead to nose, leading by his nose and not with his belly button, causing back pain. To walk properly, you want to lead with your belly button and not your nose. And to do that, it starts in your feet. When you take a step forward, you see how my ankle is bending here. And as you come up, you should be pushing off with your toes as you're going into your next step. So you want to step forward and then push off this way. As you're walking down the hallway, for instance, you can see I'm pushing off with every toe, every step, and I'm using my toes to push me off. By being able to push off with our toes, we can lead with our belly button and not our nose, and that's gonna save us from low back, mid back, and upper back stiffness. So remember, go back, understand this calf stretching, get those ankles moving and pushing off with your toes. Now that you see what we talked about and how your back pain didn't just start when you started having pain, but it actually started earlier in your life when you were much younger. How you walk, how you stand, how long you sit, what kind of jobs you're doing can contribute to a lifetime of pain in your back. Many of you may go to a gym thinking that if I strengthen my muscles, I can stabilize my back and that'll stop the pain. And you're only left with frustration because in many cases, it caused your pain to get worse and not better. And the idea is that when you are strength training your back, yes, you make your muscles stronger and yes, you make your muscles tighter, but you're compressing on the very bones that are causing the pain that you're dealing with today. Some of you may go and get injections. You, and with the injections, that's a temporary fix. Others may want to wear braces. And the problem with that is that as the brace starts to hold you into a certain space, the muscles that are short and causing the pain will actually get worse because they'll go into a spasm. The pills you take, the pills you take actually are numbing the pain process in your body. Very similar to if you go to a dentist and he gives you a shot of Novocaine, your mouth is numb, you no longer feel the pain, but he didn't actually fix the tooth at that point. Surgery is another one. There's an actual law called Wolf's Law that says that the bones follow the muscles, which means that, that no matter what happens with your bones, if the muscles are tight, the bones are going to shift to wherever the muscles want them to go. So even by doing things like fusing your vertebrae or putting rods in your back, you're actually fighting with the very muscles around those bones that are causing the pain. And what we want to get across to you is it's the muscles. It's the letting go emotionally with your brain so that you can let go physically with your muscles. Now, don't get stressed about it where you have to work out or stretch an hour every single day or it has to be a certain time of the day. When I stretch my body, I'll do a few stretches throughout the day because stretching is very similar to eating. You know, when we eat breakfast in the morning time, we don't think something's wrong by lunch when we're hungry because we understand that our bodies burn that fuel from the food we ate at breakfast. Well, the muscles work the same way. When you stretch those muscles out, the minute you get up off the floor to start doing something, you're actually starting to create tight muscles again. So by doing it throughout your day, do a few things here, a few things there, you reduce the stress, you reduce the emotional stress on your body, and you also allow your body to stay in a loosened state most of the day. And the key to it is you actually doing the work. You have to do it. I'm just a guider. Your doctor is just a guider. Your physical therapist is just a guider. The whole key to this is you doing the work because you get to feel the inside of your body and you know when you start to be tight. And as you get tighter, then, you, then once you understand how to do these stretches, now you can start to change your life. And my goal for you is to live a pain-free life.